Welcome to a look into the future. What would you do if you go into the future and ask yourself a question? Luckily, we can just ask the time traveler himself, Paul Latham, and learn the knowledge we need at our firms to evolve into advisory services and become the most relevant advisor to our clients. That's what it's about. Paul brings three key things with him. Number one, he's built a successful accounting practice in the UK, so he understands accountants. In fact, he's built his firm into an advisory powerhouse, which sold for $45 million in 2001. Number two, he's taken a business public, built it to a market value in excess of $400 million. So he really understands what business owners need in value and what we as accountants need to provide to them. And finally, as I said, number three, we don't need to invent time travel. We can just ask Paul and learn from the transition he made 20 years ago in the UK into providing business advisory services. I'm Garrett Wagner, your Entrepreneurial CPA Channel host, and I'm excited to be joined by Paul Latham from Hanrock Solutions and learn more about what he already did in the past to get into advisory services. Now, Paul, I'm gonna tell you, you got me hooked and excited about this process. I love the ability to have a system and a process to deliver advisory services to the clients we work with, to make sure we're adding real, true, value to them. Now we've kind of started to talk about the now and where of this process. So I got to assume that all is left is to hear about the how. And I'm sure knowing you, you've got a structure to that as well. Certainly do, Garrett. Absolutely. There's always a structure for everything, Garrett. Checklists and processes and systems are the way CPAs like things. And I discovered that many, many years ago at Latham's. If, if you have a system and a process and a checklist, then the CPA feels comfortable. And if you're asking them to wing it, then they don't feel comfortable. And, and that's the truth of the matter. So all built around structure. And, and it really goes back to the three ingredients of success in this case, vision, plan, and desire. So vision, we know the now. The business is almost certainly in the in-between zone. We know the where. We've been through a vision workshop. We know where we're going. We know what we want it to look like. So the how is a combination of plan and desire, and really plan is the focus area. And simplistically, plan has three key elements. We have to think about how to grow, how to deliver a service, and then how to measure the results. All right, sounds simple enough. So how do you advise your clients on how to grow then? Well, again, similarly using a process, we, we use a concept and we call it four ways to grow a business. And, and by the way, that's a mathematical fact because revenue, for example, is comprised of three elements, which is the number of customers multiplied by the number of transactions multiplied by the average value per transaction. So anyone's revenue is a combination of those three things. So it stands to reason that if you want to grow, you either have to get more new customers, you have to do more transactions with your existing customers, or three, you have to increase the average dollar value per transaction, or four, as an alternative, you just have to get more efficient, which means reducing costs. So in any business, if you went through that sort of logical sequence of one, two, three, four, then we can begin to see what's the most applicable way to drive this particular growth strategy forward. And, and begin to build a plan around that. Make sense? All right, so, so for us as CPAs, what about the how delivery? How do we deliver that process? Okay, and then the, the, the thing to remember with delivery is it's always a combination of two elements, which is deliver it efficiently at the least amount of cost, but also deliver it effectively at, at, at the appropriate level of quality. So if you start first of all with delivering efficiently, in the same way with grow, we talked about the four ways to grow a business. When it comes to efficiency, there are seven areas of inefficiency. And in each of these, we can brainstorm the team and begin to tackle them. So number one, where do defects happen in the business? Number two, where do things hang around and wait for things to happen? Number three, where do we have either the wrong process or an inappropriate process or no process where we should have a process? Number four, 
where do we over engineer? Where do we do too much for the money? Most service businesses over engineer, most CPAs over engineer all the time. Um, number five, inventory. Where do we have a problem with either unpaid bills or uh, unbilled work in progress or stocks? Number six, where does motion happen inside the business? Is it physical motion uh, that goes wrong or is it more likely to be communication inside the business that goes wrong? And then number seven, similarly, I call it transport outside the business. It could be actual logistical issues. More likely these days it's communication issues between vendors and yourself or suppliers or, or customers. And basically what you do is you brainstorm those seven areas and you build plans around the, the biggest problems that the business has. And by the way, I've done this exercise a thousand times with clients. I've never yet found a business that has less than 50 problems when you brainstorm around those seven areas of business inefficiency. And then the second area of delivery is effectively and very simplistically, there are two styles of delivery. In the 20th century, we focused on physical delivery using machines and people. In the 21st century, increasingly, we focus on intangible delivery, virtual delivery. And, and, and more, more often than not these days, it's a combination of uh, technology and virtual and subcontracting, which is how businesses are going to actually deliver their services. But either way, the business owner needs to decide their focus and build a plan. Yeah. You know, Paul, that makes complete sense when we think about it, because CPAs want comfort in this. And the, the seven principles you're bringing in there are elements we deal with on a regular basis. It's knowledge we already have. So I like that you've got a process of comfort to us. That way CPAs aren't feeling overwhelmed by this idea of advisory services that makes a lot of them uncomfortable. So bringing it back to this process, though, coming back to this, you said the plans were built around three key elements in how we had grow, deliver, and measure. So what does that last element of measure cover? Yeah, absolutely. And, and similarly, you know, grow, there was the four ways to grow. Efficiency, there were the seven ways. Measure is a combination of three factors. How do we measure the past? How do we measure the future? And how do we measure the present? Um, so in the past, you know, do we need to get better at measuring the past? Do we need to get better at annual accounts, month, monthly accounting and so on, historic performance? And the truth is probably most businesses are well on top of that. Secondly, into the future, do we need to get better at measuring the future? Do we need to get better at business profit projections or cash flow forecasts? And again, most CPAs are pretty comfortable with helping there. But the one I think that's probably applicable to most in-between zone businesses in, is the present. How do we get better at measuring the present in terms of current activity inside the business in terms of driving outcomes, key performance indicators? So rather than just wondering, for example, if, if a sale has happened or the result of a sale, let's start measuring the activity within the process leading to the sale. And as a generality, it's this third area of measuring in the present, which is the biggest focus for most in-between zone businesses who actually want to improve their business. Yeah, I love that. because I think it's so important in today's day and age as we shift the role from compliance-based to advisory-based as we stop focusing on the past and we got to focus on the present. And how do we help with our clients with coming back to we're accountants with numbers, the KPIs in the present instead of the KPIs in the past. It's another huge point that Paul and I love what you're making here. Let's focus on what matters to our clients, those KPIs, those numbers in the presence. So Paul, thank you once again for sharing your, your great, great insight into what you've already done in the past. I know I always walk away learning something and I know our audience is as well. Now something you and I both talk about behind the scenes, we're surprised that most firms we talk with are not ready for the future and they don't even realize it. We think you need to know where you stand today. Is your firm ready for the future and ready to shift into becoming the most relevant advisor for your clients? Take just a minute of your time and sign up for your own biz survey and get objective assessment of how prepared your firm is for the future. As a special offer for watching the show, we're gonna provide you with the results of your biz score and a quick pub meeting, as Paul says, to review the results with the Hainrock team. There's a link below no matter where you're watching this on social media. I encourage you 
to take the test. See where you stand on the scale so you can know, so you can make plans and changes for the future. As always, thank you for watching. Click to subscribe to our YouTube channel. And we challenge you to take action today to change the world and invest in yourself.